Hey, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the Road Podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never. Yo, what up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. DJ D Miles is MIA. He's Fixing getting his ass. He's getting his ass <laughs> fixed once again. Once again. Yeah, I do it once a month. Once a month. <laughs> it's that but, time uh, of the month. <laughs> but we got a special guest here. Over the past few months, maybe the past year or so, I've been talking about this Latin party here in Las Vegas, local Latin party in downtown Las Vegas. And, you know, I have people come to Vegas. They they visit all the time. And they always ask me, like, yo, what's popping tonight? Where should I go? Like, what's the spot to go? And to be honest with you, like, right now in Vegas, I my favorite party right now is this Altura party. Mm-hmm. And it's in downtown Las Vegas. And these are the guys that are part of Altura. We got DJ Exile Ear. and AR in the building. Hey. What's good, y'all? Uh, Welcome, thank guys. You guys. Thank you, thank you, thank What's you. What's good, y'all? Yeah, yo, first and foremost, man, thank you for having us. Yeah, Because yeah. I know you've had so many prestige people out here, man. So many. Have we? Have we? You've been on here three times. No, two times already. Yeah, I've been on. Yeah. No, this is third time. It's third time. Yeah. It's third time. Third time, yeah. We did the... Yeah, we did third time. The but first one was was you and Maven Jason. Yes, sir. Shout out to Maven Jason. Yes, sir. The second time was like a year wrap up thing. Yep. And then yep. the Christmas party, right? Oh, so it's the fourth time. It's the fourth time. Yeah. yeah. Wow, four, Not maybe. a lot of people have done four we, times. We, we, Damn. Might, we might need to uh, make a jacket for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Special edition. Yeah, you're a veteran over here. I should put yeah, my stripes right? on here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, like you guys had so many prestige people on here from like like club owners, like uh like people who own hip hop magazines producers yeah like rappers like this is big for us like because um we want to like you know you give us a, you have a huge platform if, if you guys don't know to a lot of djs from outside of like in smaller towns and that hit me up like how you guys always shout us out one of our boys uh vega was like yo dude you're on the road podcast i'm like for real yeah it was at the very end they're shouting you out they keep shouting you out yeah, yeah. you have a lot of djs that follow you guys so to give us a platform bro that's huge for us man like, that's i mean huge. like like you like right now to me your party is the most interesting organic right authentic mm-hmm. latin party i mean there's a lot of latin parties but when I go to yours, I, f- I, f- I feel like I'm being transported okay. to like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm, if it, it just feels real, yeah. you know, I'm not saying that any other Latin parties it's not, aren't real. It's not corny. It's, well, that, like, it's, legit. it's not forced. Like, oh, yeah. it just feels like I'm just, I feel like I'm being transported somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It's like like yeah. when you land in Mexico and you ask the cab driver, like, yo, <laughs> yo I need I mean, the best. I like it. <laughs> and you know, and I think it has to do with the, the, the rawness of downtown too. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I think it's a perfect, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. the perfect area for your party. And it's, sure. and for me, it's like, I could go there, you know, I have to, there isn't like all the security and like guest list and all of this shit huge to get in. Dress code. That's huge. And then like bottle no, service no and all that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Parking was, I'm, parking is easy. I mean, I, like, you know, yeah. Well, there is bottles popping, but like, but not like the. It's like, not. It's just not like, the like the strip. Strip, it's more buckets you know of Corona. And shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <More deadly. laughs> no, it, feel, it feels like it feels raw it's and real. It feels like unedited. It just you know gotcha. what I'm saying, and I like that. I like Organic. how you said experience because me air when we started this, we obviously you know there's money involved, right? Everybody wants to make money, but I'm like, as long as you bring in experience from our conchas, like we pass we pass our conchas to our graphics to our ambiance and everything that we're doing and experience. People are gonna come and, and right. party, so that's what, that's what we went for mm-hmm. the experience. You know, we want to sell you an experience. Like when you go to Disney, obviously you pay for the experience. You know, I'm not saying we're Disney, but I'm just saying you you, you go to Disney. You're a downtown you pay for Disney. The, <laughs> <laughs> downtown Disney. Yeah. You sell an experience, man, from everything. Like the artists we're booking, like um, the DJs who we bring. You know what we do. You know, yeah. just, it's always an experience. Like, did you guys have you guys gotten a concha at our party? No, that was like, Ar's idea. Yeah, we're too much in the back because it's just like, packed in the. Wait, concha. what's a concha? What is that? It's a Mexican pastry, like a Mexican bread. The little oh. conchas. You yeah. guys have that at the party? Yeah, they, yeah. You, probably, you guys get there a little late, so we hand them. They're probably gone. They're all faded, so everybody wants to eat something. So around like, one a.m., we bring them out. You know, just you know, because uh, everyone's a little too. You, you do that lit. every week? Every week? Oh shit! Damn man, I didn't know that. Yeah, so yeah, so we hand them out. We throw them in the crowd, and it's like a big basket, like you know, like like Mexican style. You know, we pass them out. And everyone just grabs them individually. At first, in the pandemic, bro, they kind of flipped out. It's on like us. it's like those uh, Catholic wafers. Yeah, like, like no, the, when they give you like the wine and the wafers. Well, you, yeah, the, it's, tequi- just, it's tequila. The, 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 <laughs> yeah. oh. So everyone just baptized. comes to the booth with their mouth open, and you give them. No, a we, we stone. Yeah, Holy we throw them out. People reach for this shit. <laughs> Come drink for him. Everyone kneels in front of the booth and opens their mouth, and, 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 and then, then AR is just. 
<laughs> Yo, believe it. And or they not. give him a shot of tequila. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. got to. Yes, you're actually right. But actually, one time we were at uh, Planet Perreo at uh, what is that? Hard Rock Live. My home, we, our homie was helping us, right? So me and my other homie were like, "Yo, well, that's crazy. Everyone's going crazy for the conchas." And then you see my boy Chuck one, right? And me and my boy just look at him, and boom, it smacks some girl in the head. Oh, and damn. then she goes up, grabs, and takes a bite. And I was just like, "Wait a second. <laughs> You're not mad at that? <laughs> I was like, yo, this concha is real sweet. Like, it, this, this is a good part of the night. Then. Wait, so here with the experience. I want to talk about this. So you have the Altura. What is Altura is the Wednesday party that you guys started. We started downtown. in the pandemic at Disco P. It started at Disco, at Disco Pussy first. At Disco originally. Pussy. Originally, yeah, in the pandemic, 2020. So you started that party, you two. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And, then, uh, and then you have now a Saturday... A perreo, what is it? Planet Perreo? It's a Viva. Viva, Viva el Perreo. Yeah, Viva el Perreo. Viva so, Perreo. Yeah, like the Perreo like, lives on. Yeah. So you got Wednesdays and Saturdays now. Correct. A weeklies. Oh, that's our weeklies, and, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And right now, mm. I you know, I'm very confident to say that you your parties, your both of your parties on Wednesdays and Saturdays are the biggest parties downtown. Oh, thank you. We, I would say try, no, no, right? Without try. question. Be right. I'm saying, I'm saying I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to work. You'll be okay. Go ahead. But you're almost keeping downtown like alive and popping. Afloat. Uh, we, I, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. hear it a lot internally. Yeah. yeah. We hear it a lot. So, I mean, to us, like, you, like not to, you know, go around the, the subject, but we literally care about the experience and the experience is with the people. So, mm-hmm. if the night is always popping and packed and, you know what I mean, even if it's not packed all the way to the back you are not walking straight to the front. Like, you're uh-huh. not. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. people love to, like, just squeeze in together no matter how big the venue is. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, our, what we're welcoming, like, you know, we posted, we welcome Latinos from all, or people from all walks of yeah. life. Like you said, we're not bougie. We don't We don't want the, I don't know how to say this in the nicest way, but, like, you don't have to be an Instagram model to be here. You don't have to be a, uh, Spend ten thousand dollars, you know, whatever. Obviously, we're in downtown. It's, it's okay to wear USPA, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like US Polo, you know? Like, it's all right. <laughs> we're not gonna it's judge. Fine. You, we're the East, you know? the East Side party, man. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's everyone's welcome. It's it's fun. It's fun. You know but what I mean? It, is there a difference between the two parties? Yes. Are two and per. Yeah, yeah. Per, per, uh, uh, Viva No, no, you gotta say it. You gotta say it. Perrero? Perrero. Perrero. Viva Perrero. That's the closest I'm getting to Perrero. 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 I don't know. Perrero. Perrero. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> nah, it's cool. Nah, um, there is. Our Wednesday. Was, I'm on the list for Perrero. Perrero? <laughs> Perrero. <laughs> woof, woof. Somebody's last name. Like, who? You, gotta, I, you know what? I'm really bad at the, the rolling R's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't do that at all. Perrero. That's what I'm like. I there you go. Perrero. There you go. I'm not even going to try it. Growl, I mean. growl a little bit, growl like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, Look at no. me and do it. Look at me and, and do anyway, it. Anyway, <laughs> what's the difference? Roll your tongue. Roll your tongue. Easy. Roll your tongue. Go ahead. So bad. What's uh, the difference? I would say so. Our original party is the Wednesday. Um, well, break it down too. Like Arturo, what does that mean? And then Pereo, what so, is Pereo? You know what I'm saying? So Pereo is like the okay. So the the best way I could put it is the doggy style. Like it's, it's you know what I mean? The it's, dance. It's the dance. You know what I mean? That, that's how you, that's how you function to reggaeton. You know, but also Pereo is a sound. You know what I mean? It's the it's like that traditional like uh, doom, 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 yeah. doom, doom, doom. Doom, it's doom, that 90, doom. 80 to 90 BPM. Mid 2000. Yeah. 98, 98, 97. Yeah. 89, I mean, we like, but there's like fucking 88, 85 BPM. Yeah, and that's like more of the commercial reggaeton, which I'm going to be honest, I don't really touch unless I speed it all the way up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I say like 90 to 97, but it's, yeah, it's, like, it's a sound and then we, you know, everybody's grinding. That's, it's, it's, it's accepted. It's like, at first, like in 05, when like, Reggaeton was taking off. All our parents were like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. yeah. But now it's like been fifteen years. It's ah, they're just so, perreando. So like in New York, yeah, in the nineties, when I grew up, when we had like high school dances and parties and shit in the nineties, the only time you could get close to a girl if a and magazine. grind <laughs> was when dance hall was playing. Mm, see, mm-hmm. so and then well, remember, you know, like, like right, yeah, like it so, don't come from dance hall. The dumbo beat, of course, yeah. yeah. So then like. So like in the '90s, everyone would just be dancing, you know. Like you hear R and B. That's I mean '80s also. Yeah, going into the '80s, you hear, into the '90s. But like yo, like we would tell the DJs, like yo, do dance hall so we can get close to the shorty oh, and okay. dance with them. And it was grinding at the time. What we we just called it grinding. It was just grinding. Because yeah, yeah. then the, then they started making all these songs like R Kelly made Bump and Grind. Grind became mm-hmm. so I'm wondering that's Pereo's like Pereo's kind the of, grind, the Latin it's grind, the grind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at that uh, time. See, like, I, just got, I just got a history you know lesson. I love it. it. That's what Pereo is. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to 25 year old. Hey. So when they like, they, there's all these songs. Everyone's like Pereo, Pereo. Perreando. It's just it's like grinding. It's like yeah. grind, grind. Mm, it's like at the time with the 90s, all these R and B songs. Yeah. Everyone's grinding, grinding, and then there was wine in the 2000s. 
thousands. Yeah, this is a whole. It's the same shit. Yeah, like the jump like off that. videos from the that's, that's pretty much Got what Perreo is. Yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah. And then Altura, it's, where did that come from? It's just it, it means takeoff. Yeah, it's like taking off. You know what I mean? It's just one it's hype. Yeah, it's hype. It's being it means uh, hype pro- and proper like Spanish. Yeah, but, but also Altura to us is also like doing it with like either you know just class and just doing it, like doing it to do it. You know what I mean? Like, well, where did that come from? Where did that originate? That's saying I can't say. Is that from the song? Okay. Why, why? <laughs> N- NDA, 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 NDA. Nah. My publicist said no. I'm kidding. <laughs> was it from the so from the bad. Rosalia yeah. Calvin song? We was little, I swear to God, I was listening to it in the office and I was like, yo, Altura. And literally, so this is my boy. I'm so by the way, we're we 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 also have another. Did partner. it really come from that song? Yeah, I swear to God, we were listening to it. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of whack though. It is whack, <laughs> but it's the meaning behind but it. You know, you know what's what crazy? Mean? All these reggaeton parties. I was thinking, did it reggaeton. come from that song? And I said, nah, it must be coming from some. I mean, like every other party comes from a song. Well, every every yeah, like yeah, every everything comes like well with the party crews. They used to name their any hip hop or any reggaeton song was popping. They just named the, the party that party. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same party crews we were talking about. Chris. Yeah, shout to uh, Co One because I was bro, I was in love with that uh, episode. I'm like, oh shit, the big has badges that was my shit yeah bro <laughs> you guys had that in vegas huh yeah, uh, yeah. That's, where all, that's where yeah that's where all all the uh the reggaeton started in, here in vegas it's been underground when it wasn't popular when i was told to like not play that shit anywhere what's crazy is like i, I wasn't one i was not even old enough to even like know what this stuff was but yeah. i was following it because i used to love house music you know what i mean i still do but that was like when the shuffling scene out here was like like ignited oh, yeah, yeah. so that's where the shufflers and all the latinos would come and it'd be edm and like straight perreo, bro. Like it would be nothing, and a little bit of hip hop. But it's crazy to see that, like, that's the format. We see how he calls it straight yeah. perreo, not reggaeton. Like a lot of people call, it, like, I'm gonna go to the to the perreo tonight. Like, oh, perreando. Like they don't. We don't say like, oh, I'm gonna go to reggaeton night. Like it's like it sounds weird. We we kind of nicknamed it like perreo. That's how we say it. It's right? like we're gonna go to reggaeton. reggaeton. It's old. Is that yeah. what I'm saying? No, no, it's not like that. But like Latinos, we go like, oh, we're gonna go to the perreo. Like, oh, that girl's perreando on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so perreo's more like the scene, and reggaeton is a genre. Of music. Yeah, I would yes. say that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I can't In wait for never to be like, yo, that girl's perreando. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. October 26th. Hey, they'd be like, yo, Nev, you killing it? That girl's perreando, man. <laughs> He's gonna be on the microphone. Better yeah, better my blood. I'm gonna, I'm, but also, like, I'm gonna learn to say it right because I want to see Takesha when she comes to your podcast. Yeah. yeah. So wait, you, you guys have been getting artists. I think I feel like the first big artist you guys had at a, at your event was Jay Cortez. Was it or uh, no? It was, that actually, was the first big artist, but not the first artist. It was a uh, yeah, big artist was uh, Jay Cortez. Jay Cortez, yeah. and then it, before that was DJ Luyan, who disco- he's the one that discovered Bad Bunny. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. In a way, in a way, yeah, yeah. And also, we right before the pandemic, right, like. Right as we started Altura, we actually booked Mariah and Mariah, the show. Mariah Angelique. Yes. Mariah Angelique, yes, she yeah. rebranded. And uh Oh, so her first she was first Mariah. She was just yeah, Mariah. and her SEO was so messed up that like I, I think that's why they rebranded it. Cause at first that's what it was. Mariah Carey, Mariah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Mariah is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh actually the show was set for March 17th, which Di- we all know. And shout to Dynamic, because that's Mariah's DJ, right? Yeah, so, sure. shout yeah. to him. Shout to Dynamic circle. DJ. It's yes. it's crazy. Uh, I went to Dynamics Thursday party at El Chingong. Okay, that was fire. Diego. Yeah, San Diego. Yeah, San Diego yep. and stuff. And I like. I was like, yo, I love this party too, man. So Arturo is like takeoff, right? Takeoff. And then you in slang the, in slang. Yep. And then what's the differences between the Arturo on Wednesdays and then the Saturdays? So, so the way I, I would say we keep it, we keep it a lot classical, like old school reggaeton and kind of like the cuts on Wednesday mm. and then we go commercialized a little bit you know we bring in a little bit more EDM a little bit more hip hop a little more more club you know, music di- you know diverse because guess what Latinos love all types of music doesn't mean we should go listen to reggaeton so like right? open format yeah not not too open format it's kind of like you just had a, you, you had a few you had a, someone's quinceanera bro you're someone's wedding like a family party you know what I mean oh, okay. like you're gonna listen also, to Suavemente also we and- keep our traditions more on the Wednesdays like our conchas um What's it called? Also, our OG, like our family, like the people that eat that fucked with us, like since the beginning, they come out more on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Cause Saturdays is like just all the Latinos from all over, yeah. you know, Vegas that come party. Wednesdays more of the local. Um, it's not as packed, but like more of the tradition as far as like the conchas and like a little bit different of the experience. So that's the best way to put it. So it's like Wednesdays are more throwbacks, more yeah. classics. You go deeper in, in, it's in all, the crates. Yeah. It's all Latin right? music yeah. during the yeah. whole time. Yes. You know, we've been going to your parties and you've been pushing this Latin movement. You know, for a long time. Yes, sir. Um, you know, we, we probably were, you and Maven Jason were doing parties in Blue Martini. 
How many even, years even ago? Before that, even before that. So we were in the party scene together. Obviously, we weren't in the same crew. Like right. The CO one had there's party crews. Yeah. So it was like 2005 when Gasolina, all the Don Omar, all that was coming mm-hmm. out, and there was you know all these, all these house parties. No clubs were playing reggaeton. It wasn't popular at the time. It was kind of like uh, when hip hop was coming out. You had to go to the underground to go listen to hip hop. I mean, we were playing reggaeton. Like in the 2000s, were you? The, yeah, we yeah. were playing that in the clubs. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was well, playing. I was, I was 21. I'm talking about like as far as like like Dale. The thing is, like there wasn't like you know we would throw that in the set and like, then get out. Would, yeah, and we would oh, just okay, get yeah. out. And it was like certain songs that we would play, but we were yeah. playing like gasolina for sure. Rock, playing gasolina, Dale. We were playing rock taka. We were playing rompe. Wow. Okay. I would, I would even bring it back to Dile. I what would about bring burning Ivy up? Queen. Uh, is that what burning is up? But we see me and then and Kelly. Oh no no no! It was a classic, but man, she nah, fucked we it lost up. it. <laughs> so, but then also, I came from New York. So mm-hmm. in the early two thousands, uh, before I came to Vegas, I couldn't really get a lot of gigs. I was like trying to get gigs. Mm-hmm. So, and I, this is when I had vinyl. Mm-hmm. So I would have to do Dominican parties in in Washington Heights. Yep. At the, I remember the club was called Umbrella. Mm-hmm. So they wanted hip hop, and they wanted reggaeton. And it was like one of their, like it was an industry night. I think it was a Thursday or something or okay. Tuesday or some shit. And I was like this Korean kid with all these Dominicans <laughs> in Washington Heights. Yeah. And I'm DJing. <laughs> and I got vinyl and I couldn't get all the reggaeton songs on was vinyl. Was it hard to get it on vinyl? Yeah, it was hard. It was hard? Even the, then, you couldn't find the bootlegs? Huh? The bootlegs? I mean, some find? of them I couldn't get. Like I couldn't get some of them. Like You can't the, even find re- old school reggaeton acapellas either because yeah. the way they recorded it. It was yeah. all recorded at once. Like it wasn't like. like the biggest song at the time was uh, Pobre Diabla. Yeah. It was like the wow. huge, the biggest song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like I couldn't even get that on vinyl. So I had it on CD. So I had to like continuously play that shit. Yeah. Oh, a lot of like a thong you and would then get. They would songs. harass me. They'd be like, play bachata, play. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck is bachata? Well, you know? And I'm like, that's the I don't have bachata. And they're like, all these girls are like yelling at me, like, <laughs> play bachata. Why are you like, we don't want to hear this shit. So there was like, this thing where like some of the Dominicans didn't want to hear reggaeton or hip hop, and then they just wanted only bachata. That's a Dominican thing for sure. Yeah. Kind of like then, Dembo, what Dembo is now. Like I played in DC, and mm-hmm. a lot of Dominicans out there. Dembo, 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 Dembo. Over here, we play it, but not as strong as the yeah, yeah. East Coast. So the East Coast is completely different when you DJ out there, Huge. right? Yeah, I don't. You, over here, you get Bad Bunny requests. Over there, you get Dembo requests. I didn't get a single Bad Bunny request. Not a single one. Hey, bro, you got you got you got Dembo. Hey, yo, you got Dembo. My damn every. And they would tell me, hey, in the middle of your sets. Slam bachata. I'm like, what? Because bachata is so slow. I don't play bachata usually on the West Coast until yeah. the end of the night. Yeah. Because slam bachata in the middle uh, of your set. I'm like, oh, okay. We're on the East Coast for I real. I feel like a lot of East Coast uh, like Latin parties and mm-hmm. Latin DJs, yeah. they fucking hate it when I when, when we're here like on the podcast. Mm-hmm. They hate listening to like the West Coast Latin yeah. parties. I don't, bl- I don't blame I, them, though. I feel like, yeah. I mean, I don't blame them either. Not, I feel like they feel like they're not being represented on the yeah. East Coast mm-hmm. as much as like, because we, we're talking to nothing but like dynamic, you guys. Yeah. It's all like West, West Coast, Coast DJs. Shit, yeah. yeah. And okay. they're like, yo, like, we don't fuck with that. All those songs, like, this is a completely different experience yeah. over there. Well, it is. But they yeah. also have to understand who we have on the West Coast and who they have on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. got Central Americans and Mexicans on the West Coast, yeah. which were a little later. And also our Spanish isn't as fast as theirs. So we're not, we don't have, Mexico doesn't have a reggaetonero, except for Becky G. Like, we don't have a reggaetonero. Dominicans got the whole Dembo movement. Puerto Ricans, I mean, bro, I can, there's a whole list. Exactly. Colombia's got it. Every Chile right now, I can, all of them got, so they got the East Coast. That's why it's different. I hate to do like these, uh, <laughs> these like genre comparisons, but Dembo is very similar to like Soka in the 2000s. Yeah. Okay. So like in the, in the 2000s, when, when Soka was kind of popping with Kevin Little. Yeah. Like you only had like Kevin Little, like turning me on. And like Rupee, uh, Rupee attempted to touch, still, yeah, right. Yeah. So like, so like those are the only kind of crossover Soka records, yeah. And then like so for like Dembo, there's only like a handful of crossover Dembo records that you could play. I feel like on the West Coast, true. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't all go off, yeah. And it's like you kind of like, lose the room a little bit. All I'm going to take for us, uh, for Dembo, I would push Dembo out here. My boy's Dominican. Yeah. Hey, so you never play fucking Dembo, bro. You yeah. need to fucking play that. It took me a minute. Same with Latin Trap. Latin yeah. Trap. 
with Bad Bunny, I had to like keep playing it, keep playing it, and you get on the mic. Yo, that, this, this is that new shit. You yeah, know? that like, never that never really crossed over no. on the West Coast. What? I would try to play Shambaya, uh, Shambaya all the time, and I'm like, yo, I got to get out of this. It show. only lasted a very small period. Yeah. That's why like, Bad Bunny left like, the trap. Yeah, yeah. Crip, Crippy Kush. I was like, oh, I'm getting a little bit, but yeah, not enough. That, that yeah. kind of worked a little bit. A little People bit. People knew that yeah. one. Like yeah. three months. Yeah. Yeah. But you had to play like the it Nikki, was a small window though. Yeah. The Nikki, the Nikki remix, the Travis Scott one with the yeah, all that shit. Oh, that was horrible. That was horrible. So I think I think La Romana is what actually helped like them both cross over here. Yeah, obviously yeah. it's Bad Bunny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wait, Bad who? Bunny, Say again. Uh, La Romana, which is the El Alfa, the Alfa. Of and course, the, uh, yeah. yeah. Bad Bunny track. But that, you say that's, that's what helped it. Cross that, that's what helped it. And then following up with like Cuatro K and like La Mama, mm -hmm. and then even going into Pepas, which is the Pepas, like the commercialized Dembo like inspired like EDM track. You know what I mean? Guaracha. You know, yeah. like just all those rhythms right I, there is what I, allowed it to like, you know, I honestly, I honestly think the crossover for me, in my opinion, when I started seeing like a bubble was El Alpha, Mama La Mama La Dad. Yeah. Joke. And it was like the video and it was like during the pandemic. So it was all over social media. You just saw that oh, that yeah. song and everything. And it was just like that. That really kind of popped it off. And then like at the same time, like Tokisha and everything. Yeah. So like I, I, I feel like that song out. only. Yeah, the crossover, but not like in the Latin world. Latin world, people are already yeah. listening to Alfa, Rochi. Yo, know. for sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're already bumping. Yeah, but I get it, the crossover. Yeah, yeah. as a crossover, yeah. Because okay. like, homies would send me Dembo shit from like New York and You're shit. Like, I'm like, I can't play none of this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't even like remember or retain anything because I'm like, yo, none of this is crossover. Yeah. But then when that when the Mama La Mama came out, I was like, oh, I could I could play this, mm -hmm. and then say Akabo, and then all of this shit started. I'm like, yo, I could play, you know, Cuatauca. I could play this now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So like, crossed all, over. and then with mm -hmm. Tokisha, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, this shit is popping. Mm -hmm. I can maybe tease some of this, but really, I couldn't even really start playing Tokisha in my in like a crossover top forty room here on the West Coast. So maybe like this ago. summer, maybe yeah. like a marshmallow. Yeah, like mm -hmm. not even that, man. Come on, no. like this, I remember I was at your party like yeah. months ago earlier this year, and I was like, yo, play Singamo. I was like, play Singamo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit, that shit and, then, and then you played it, and it was like it was cool, but like. I saw the girls kind of be like, oh, like, yeah, you know, this was earlier in the year. But yeah. now if you play that shit, it's completely yeah. different. Mm -hmm. It is. You I know? agree with you. I think. But the rhythm is more like memorable now, though, you know, also like with the EDM remixes, like La Mama, just speaking about that. Imagine that remix with Gordo. You know what I mean? That Carnage remix that allowed it to be played in the club. You know, that's a whole other demographic right there. That's like the rest of the world. I didn't even know there was a Gordo remix. Oh, you got it. Oh, dude. The red tape and Gordo remix. Right now, Latin bro. Tech House yeah. is fucking. It's, it's on fire. That's just. Bro. Wait, Latin yeah, you, Tech House? You would, exactly. You were talking to me about Latin Tech House. Yeah. Because there's Guaracha, right? Yeah. Mm. And then. Oh, I said. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm saying there's Guaracha. Oh, there's Guaracha, yeah. There's Guaracha, which is Latin. like kind of a Peppas and like the. What is that? Uh, With the horns and shit. Baila, like, it's like it's like Cornetto, Baila Conmigo. Baila, Baila Conmigo, yeah. right? But then now you have this tech house thing where like they were they were sampling all these like R and B, nineties R and B, two thousands R and B, like hip hop. Tech house joints. Yeah. You yeah. stay on my mind. Now they're yeah. doing that with reggaeton. Now they're, doing now, that. Right? they're getting all the yeah. reggaeton acapellas and putting them on Latin tech house. At first, and that started this on, summer. That started this summer. I would say this year. I would say it started literally at the in the pandemic during like like the mm. like the little live stream series, which uh oh, every EDM artist was on there. And going back to Gordo and Carnage, you know what I mean? Like he literally dropped, I think it was a, a plan B remix and the whole internet for some reason just went crazy over it and i think that's when uh they did that's when like pepas was buzzing mm -hmm. and they did la mama remix and then from there they started uh dioro i mean dioro's always been you know popping yeah yeah in the edm latin game and then it, the sounds basically the samples just started getting more like um like traditional like they they, they did Nostalgic. the solamente yeah yeah they brought back all the like you said like the 90s rap like vocals but in in reggaeton yeah so and just looped it kind it of the just same way. Looped it. Yeah, because I just heard uh, Carnage. I don't know if you guys posted, but Carnage put out a Theo Calderon. I think he did it. It's actually, ding, it's actually Black V neck. Ding ding. Okay. And it goes yeah, into he the did a, he did Take House Theo Calderon um, uh, remix. The remix shit. Yeah. Yeah. Segwaying. I, that's actually our our one of our parties too. We have a Bajo Mundo party that that does that. It was uh, a lot of his idea when he first brought it up. He was yo Latin Tech House is it? I'm like this is whack. I don't want to hear if they get thrown out fucking You was, was being the old hater? Yeah. I was being the old hater. I was being the old hater. He goes, bro, this is popping. I'm like, bro, nobody wants to hear this a shit. Are you, you're young though, right? How old are you? Yeah, I'm 25. 25. 
Yeah. Oh wow. I just started paying taxes. <laughs> he's still, he's still, he has one. He has one more year on his mom's insurance. Wait, <laughs> my mom got insurance. The, the, the next year, twenty six. <laughs> oh word. That's a lot. That's a lot. Shit. Huh? Yeah, that's some right. Latin shit. No, we do that too. In, okay. Uh, <laughs> the minority story. When you're on your All parents' yeah. shit. Okay. 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 Yeah. When you're on your parents' health insurance yeah, at, yeah. at, at their company job. Right? Yeah. Your company job. Hell yeah. <laughs> and congrats, you're having a baby too, right? Oh yeah. Thank you, Shaw Baby oh, Altura. Yeah, baby Altura. Baby Altura. Oh, Altura. Oh, shit. Life. <laughs> Life's gonna come at you fast, man. Facts, facts. Real fast. Yeah. I know. Well, like who who are your like favorite remixers or editors for Latin Tech House right now? Man. It, you said red tape. Red tape, Chewy. red tape. Chewy. Chewy. Chewy's, Chewy's up there. Chewy, Chewy. yeah. Even Chewy's Diplo played like three of his edits uh before Bad Bunny at his uh, oh, yeah. concert. They be going off. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Also Everybody. uh Suave, Suave, uh people who are actually pushing it, uh, I would say are people like Clooney. He's at Marquee right now. Mm. Um who else is uh, Hugo's? He's French, but he's pushing the Latin scene like crucial right now. And Gordo, Gordo's running with this whole like just tech house scene in general. But his a lot of his stuff is actually Latin based. Gordo is Carnage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't switch his name. And he's Guatemalan, I believe. He's a uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Oh, Nicaragua. Both, both. I think he lived in one country and then left the. He left. Nicaragua to go to Guatemala. Yeah, to Guatemala. Because the whole civil I didn't know war. Carnage was Nicaraguan. I didn't, yeah. know, that. Yeah. I didn't know that. He's he Latin. speaks fluent Spanish and everything. Yeah. I didn't know either until I'm like, why is he doing Latin tech house? Oh, he's Latin. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's our other party too. So Yeah, so like, tell me about Bajo Mundo because you guys keep bringing it up. So I want. So Bajo Mundo is a, a party that we throw, another yeah. party, one of our parties. So you have a third party. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, Bajo Mundo. It's once a month or every other month depending on schedule. And it's pretty much uh, like he was explaining, like the Bajo Mundo means the underworld, the Latin tech house, the Moon Baton, right, the right. bass movement and, and everything else. And then on the in the other room of that venue, which is we all scream in downtown, um, it's the Perreo de Reggaeton. So you have two rooms. You got like a Carnage Gordo feel in the back to you know to paint it for people. Yeah, yeah. And upstairs it's the Don Omar Bad Bunnies. You know Perreo. Perreo. And, Perreo. Yes. <laughs> at at, at this, that's one of our that's one of our other parties that we throw. It's crazy because on on the West Coast now it's like the Latin scene is expanding to so many sub subcategories sub genres. Mm-hmm. That it never had before. It was just reggaeton. You know what I mean? And now it's or reggaeton. Now it's guaracha. Now there's a Latin tech house. You know? And then yeah. there's even... You guys are playing bachata, cumbia, bando, everything. Like, yep. And it's just, it's just expanding and expanding more and more. Yes. Which is like, which is great. I think it's amazing. And it's one of the things that like... That's what I find so interesting about the Latin scene right now. Because it's just growing. Mm-hmm. And it's ex- there's so many layers to it because and the layers are there is because there's so many different Latin countries mm-hmm. and every country and ev- you know what I'm saying like yeah. every country everyone from like Puerto Rico the Dominican Republic to like Central America to South America yeah. everyone's bringing a piece of of them to the to the table you know what I'm yep. saying so it's just continuously expanding and expanding. Where it's Big not time. just this one thing of like reggaeton. It was crazy. Or salsa to, or to add to this, like yeah. literally to all those countries, literally like bro, Brazil right now is going crazy with the baile funk. Like the baile funk is probably getting bigger. Like in the next year, probably even this summer or next summer type thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally going to pop off even crazier because like those artists are now getting US bookings. They're not getting Europe bookings. And it's like all you need is for one of these guys to blow up. When, and, was, when was the baile funk uh, wave? There was a wave like a little uh, bit. It was 20 global, years ago, big, right? Yeah. Well, Ross one was DJing. Uh, La Favela. It was a, like a Brazilian wow. party, and they were playing baile funk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he would. They would go to Brazil to do the party, so they would do. Wow. It was Tuesdays at Mokai. Yeah. We were there together. Actually, yeah. mm-hmm. that was the first time. We, I met honestly, us. when we were there, it was like all because there's so many Brazilians. There's like all these Brazilian models. There's a, like a, a big Brazilian population in Miami yeah. at the time, and they would yo Ross one would DJ in fucking Brazil, and the yep. party would move from Brazil to Miami. It was like in. It was in like Miami Times. They got like they got written up. Yeah. I, I feel for like Miami is, is the Latin hub for uh yeah. for yeah, the for United sure. States. Hundred percent for sure. Hundred yeah. percent the Latin like, hub. Yeah. I mean, if you, hub. if you guys have to bring, if you guys ever bring Altura to Miami, I'm sure it'd be a completely different yeah. experience, yo. Like it'll be crazy. We would book different DJs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different because I know the culture and all. It's a different stuff. world. Like if you yeah, guys have to bring Altura to Miami, would you guys be intimidated or would you guys? Um, I wouldn't. No, I, nah. Because nah, I, I, I listen to it. I have so many. I have friends from all the all, all these other countries that I'm listening to all the new shit 
Yeah. Yeah, like I play Chilean shit. No one plays Chilean reggaeton. Yeah. And my, I got some Chileans that come up like, bro, no one plays this shit over here. I'm from, oh, they're wow. from like Virginia or something. Like, oh my God, like nobody plays it over here. Cause you know, I'm downloading Argentina's popping right now. Wow. Well, yeah, so. It's just expanding and expanding. getting bigger and bigger. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we're it's at right now. It's insane right now. Like, yes. I, it's so <laughs> interesting to me. I, I, like, where do you, so like I, in the beginning, right? When you guys were started, like Exile, when you were starting out. Yeah, you know, I know you from Blue Martini when you guys yep. were doing Thursdays at Blue Martini. Yes, sir. It was, it was you it and Maven Jason, yeah. yep. and that was the biggest Latin party in Vegas at the time. What What was that year? What was that like? Two thousand. I was there for a year, so like uh, we're in twenty twenty. Two thousand fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen. Fifteen, sixteen. Wow. Fourteen to sixteen. Well, it was it was at its peak until the twenty twenty. I would say. Right. Wow. Yeah. I met you twenty seventeen there. I so graduated twenty fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord, yeah, 20, 20, uh, 2014, 13 to like two thousand and twenty. Right, it was popping for like six, seven years. Yep. And you've been in this movement. Did you ever think it would be like looking back? Do you did you ever think it would be like how it is now? Not at all. No. I just man, like like I said, I always watch you guys at the club, and I'm like, fuck, how am I gonna get in here? Like I never like I'm like, fuck, fuck, like I bro, it was like I was devastated. I'm like, man, I need to be at these clubs. How do I get in here? I never thought I was gonna get in here with Latin music. I never, never in my life. I never thought. I never thought it was gonna be this big, and like just to say something, man. I think we're living in the big, uh, in the golden era of reggaeton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know everyone says. Do you think ahead. it's gonna get bigger than yes, right now? Yes. Oh, Oh, one thousand percent. We just need to protect Bad Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's protect him at all costs. Off, that's a uh -huh. like, that's a huge fucking. It's, he gets canceled and somehow I don't know he commits murder or some shit. Yeah. Like it don't yeah. take a fucking dive, man. <laughs> gets caught with ketamine or something. Oh, <laughs> He's hard to get canceled though because he does whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> it's literally his album. Yeah, like. That's <laughs> what it is. But yeah, like we're in the golden era. I used to think like, oh, like it's it's over when it. it oh, I thought oh five oh six oh seven was like yeah. the mecca. Yeah. Then I was talking to his boy. He's younger. He's like. He wasn't like he wasn't older to experience 05, 06, you know, of like reggaeton. He goes, the old golden era is now. I'm like, no, it's not, bro. You know me being older, I'm thinking I'm wiser. He goes, bro, when have you seen a, a tour like Bad Bunny, like Carol G, mm -hmm. you know, like all these artists at Latin clubs? I'm like, you're right. You would never see that shit in 05. So he goes, take, don't take it for granted. This is the golden era of reggaeton right it's now. I mean, it's I'm like, true. holy shit, you're right. Yeah. It's really I, true. Though. I didn't think of that. I never thought of that. I mean, look look at this strip, man. Like the yeah. strip is like to me the only interesting thing. And I've said this multiple times is just the Latin parties that are going on right now mm -hmm. because yeah. it's not it's not redundant. Mm -hmm. It's new. It's like it's, it's a new experience, and it's also like Latin people like Latinos haven't had that experience where they could go and wild the fuck out and hear their music and be represented like that. Yes. It's very similar to like Vegas. Well, in Vegas. Vegas, remember, yeah. like there was a time we saw like no black people in Vegas, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden Dre's open and they were embracing shit, and it was like, yo, it was like really, it was just like you had performances, and it was like there was mm -hmm. more pool parties, weekly concerts, and it was yeah. like, yo, it bringing was, the artists, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was more open, but now like I feel like hip hop and EDM. Uh, is like it's redundant. It's a yeah. little like it's like it seems like it's predictable. It's so predictable. That's better. what it is. So I, it's like the I think experience, it's the culture. Is, yeah. I think it's the culture, like, uh, not no shame to hip hop, but you can't dance to a lot of it, not at the moment. But, Reggaeton, dude, like, you, bro, you can dance to, like, also the shorties, bro. All my homies who are non Latinos, like, yo, I want to go just for the shorties, bro. Like, the, 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 the like, I'm like, God damn, but also, you know but I, I didn't even know you guys had women at your party. <laughs> I thought it was all dudes. <laughs> Stop. I, was I thought it was saying. all dudes in Jenny 69. No, I, I, but like also, like, my ex too, what I my noticed, ex too. like, when I was doing hip-hop, I was like, bro, everyone stands on their phone, they pop bottles, they stand on couches. Bro, no one's dancing so, a twerk for five seconds. Dude, reggaeton, it's all fucking night, nonstop dancing. Because, actually, the, the thing is, this is like, hip-hop, it's a redundant experience. It's because it's like, nothing's really changed in that in a hip-hop club world. Because it's just redundant. It's like, you we've played, like, all these songs. Mm -hmm. We've played all of that shit. Mm -hmm. And okay, then, now know, I get it. You understand? And yeah, but, now I understand. But your Latin music, like Latinos haven't had that era yet. We haven't. No, it, it, you know now. what I'm saying? I hope, I hope we're in here it's, now, man. No, but like in 10 <laughs> years, it might be like, they'll be like, oh, man, uh, like, another money. pareo. Like, I'm yeah. so sick of pareo. Like, it'll be yeah. like that. But you know what I'm saying? That's how yeah. it goes. Yeah, yeah that's, how, that's it how it goes. What, that's how it goes. I'm enjoying as much as I can right now, man. This is your time. Like, Take advantage of it, man. Thank you, Bad Bunny. Thank you, We just had Jay Nice, right? We had Jay Nice the other week. And he was like, you know, like, yeah, but man, like, you know, like, what, what's going on? Like, 
You know, it's cool, like this hip hop, this uh, Latin shit, but come on, man. Like, let's get back to the roots. Let's get or back what? to the hip hop <laughs> shit. <laughs> what? And I'm like, yo, you got to understand, like, this is this is their time Thank right you. now. Yeah, this we is never time had it. Right it was underground. Yeah. It was, mm-hmm. I remember, like, a lot of, uh, when I started doing small lounges, I'd play a little gasolina, Dile, you know, whatever. Get out of this now. Get out of I'm like, damn, now it's like, bro, come and DJ for us, come and DJ for us. And, like, I never imagined it was going to be like this. I just, I don't know why it took this long. It, like, but Bad Bunny is one of the biggest ones that helped us out. Like his records, even if you don't speak Spanish, are so um, melodic. melodic yeah. So maybe, like you said, the production too. We talked I mean, about that in the last. I podcast. mean, you wouldn't get to this Bad Bunny era if you didn't have like the J Balvin, true, and, and the Despacito. The I mean, Daddy that was Hickey, man. that was really the changing point. Yeah, yeah, Danny, me hante, me hante, all me hante, that, me hante, me hante, Don Omar, all of those shits. But like, yeah, yeah I mean. I think the real changing point was Despacito. Despacito. 15. That was I can admit to that. And J Balvin. Yeah. J Balvin. Like, yeah. uh, yo, I went to New York and I remember I was in a taxi cab and they were listening to Bad Bunny real early. Mm-hmm. And they were telling me about Bad Bunny, but he's like, yo, no one's fucking with the Colombians. The Colombians are killing it right now. The Columbia, he's like J Balvin. I'm like, me, me and- J Balvin, Maluma, yeah. Carol G. And it was like, yo, the they're, Columbia, they're, they're killing, killing it. it. Yeah. And this was like in 2016. 18. No, this was the early. It was like oh, real early. early. It was really early. The trap era. Yeah, yeah, but I talked to a lot of Colombia homies and like, not we don't have an, the, what's cool about Latinos, we all work together. I think that's why it's so big. I see a Colombia. But y'all all kind of hate each other. Too. So I was going to, I was going to, I was going <laughs> to, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I don't even know how these two are friends. Hold one up. is Salvadorian and one is Mexican. <laughs> and we're arch enemies, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. Mexican yeah. Salvadorian, you get to put in a room, it's like, oh shit. They're like Dominicans and Puerto Ricans to the West Coast. Fuck you. Is it that bad, really? It's yeah, pretty bad. bad. It's pretty bad, bro. <laughs> when he said, you when, when, when AR said, I'm Salvadorian, I said, what the fuck? Bro, uh, you go to LA soccer game, Salvador versus Mexico, I'm not even going, bro. Yeah, no. Blood bath, bro. Uh-uh. Blood bath, bro. But back to like the Colombian and everything, like we all work together. Yeah, we have our we have more like we don't hate on each other, but we have like a competition. So a lot of the Colombians, it's okay. Right now it's happening in the Latin world. Everyone's speaking like a Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. It's their slang right now. So uh, a lot of like Colombians be like, I don't want to speak like a Puerto Rican. I got a chimba, parcero. You know, they have different s- slang. So like, wait, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, it's huge. That sounds really corny though. No, what? Yeah, that Puerto Rican Spanish but, is. Come on, well, no, Puerto, like we're Hispanic. Like, like if I had a son, like if, if I was, uh, <laughs> I don't know what what, what was that? What, what was that? If I was Venezuelan, uh-huh, right? okay, and I had a son and he's Venezuelan, uh-huh. but he's trying to like have like a Puerto Rican accent. Let me explain it to you. Hold on, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like a Bonix. Okay, how's it going, man? For sure. No, we well, say for show now. Because of of culture, the Puerto uh, Ricans have invent have and a lot of like Panamanians, Venezuelans, Colombians hate that. Like everyone wants to speak like a Puerto Rican. <laughs> I have a lot of Panamanian homies like they invented the because they cut their short their words so short, and also because they're they're the reggaeton artists. The biggest ones are come are coming from Puerto Rico. Yeah. So all the reggaeton world was able to emphasize that like saying poppy to each other. That's a Puerto Rican thing. Yeah. Nobody poppy. else says that except maybe Dominicans right and Cubans, but like Cuban. Colombians. Bro, Panamanians don't say that. Venezuelans don't say that. Mexicans, I I'll never call nobody papi, except we're playing around. But like in our culture, we, nobody says, if you say, hey, what's up, papi? Like, hey, that's homosexual, bro. We don't say that. Pause, but to, but to, pause, pause. <laughs> but that's resume. what's going on. Like, But like there is an animosity, but like there is like a, like you said, no one's fucking with the Colombians. It's because like the like Puerto Ricans sometimes like look at like, well, we own the world right now. Like in the reggaeton, we have Bad Bunny, we have Anuel, we have, you know, Raul Alejandro, you know, we have all these people, so yeah. that's what's kind of going on. Not to speak for everybody, so don't don't attack me, but no, yeah. I speak to a lot of, like, Latinos that aren't from other no, countries. No, but it's true, because, like, you know, Neva and I are from New York, yeah. so I grew up around a lot of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, Yep. Mm-hmm. but, like, if I talk to Mexicans, yeah. like, and I say coño, they don't know what that is. Some of them don't know what coño is, and mm-hmm. coño is, like, shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. We all know that, because we hear it all the yeah. time, coño, yeah. Yeah. and, like, cabron, cabron is, like, that's our it's shit. really bad, yeah. in, but in for Puerto Ricans, that's really bad. That's mm-hmm. like you a bitch. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, mm-hmm. if, if if you call someone a cabron, it's like yo, you, you start fighting in New York. Mm-hmm. But in, it's in funny that, growing up in New York, you yeah. know all the Spanish bad words. Yeah, you know we know all the bad words. <laughs> you know the Dominican and Puerto Rican ones. That's not the Mexican ones, or like I know all the Puerto okay. Rican, the mostly Puerto Rican, mostly Puerto Rican. Because cabron, when I, when I was like working with Mexicans, like, it's cabron, like, cabron, cabron, cabron. Yeah, they the would, that was like homie. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Like, yo, what up? What up, cuz? It's, like, it's yeah. kind of like badass. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm coming on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm a and badass. Like, has got my head. Like, they yeah. say my head, my head, my head. I was like, what the fuck? And until I married a Salvador, I was like, what the fuck? Is <laughs> yeah, like, man, I, I remember saying like chocha. They don't 
We don't say Mexicans chocha. Don't say cho- they don't know what chocha is. <laughs> now, That's crazy. Now, now they do. Like now, in, wait, is it in the Bronx? There's literally a beach in the yeah, Bronx called um, Ocha, Chocha Beach. Ocha Beach is called Chocha wow. Beach. Chocha Beach. That's funny. And there was a song back in the days by this dude by name Pablo um, Pablo Chocha. <laughs> Pablo. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> no, Pablo, Pablo Tota. Hey, oh, Tota was one of the songs. And they say also oh, Toto. They say Toma. What's a Toto? Like we, like <laughs> what I'm saying is like like the Puerto Ricans. Not so because Bad Bunny's so big too, and everyone's singing their lyrics. Right. All the Mexican girls and the Salvadoran girls are like using the Puerto Rican slang. Oh. Like boy, pal, like they'll, they'll cut the short with the word short, just like in their captions and everything. Like how they're speaking too. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, we book a lot of local. Latin uh, uh, artists and a lot of Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban artists and stuff like that. There's there's Puerto Rican, Dominican, and Cubans in yep. Vegas. Yep, we got Demir That's, Major. Yeah. She's Puerto Rican. We just had Intersound. He's a Cuban cat. Yoel, he's our host every weekend. Uh, I don't know if you've I seen didn't him. Know that he's Puerto Rican. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of small pockets. It's not as big as New York, obviously, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but we. That's what I'm saying. We try to bring an experience. Like, okay, we're not just going to a bunch of DJs. Wow, or like, let's say like Salvadorans and. and Salvadorans and Mexico are the biggest population in Las Vegas. But if you're Puerto Rican, like, I'm not represented, man. Oh, I got Yoel. Yoel is a Puerto Rican. I can finally go. I feel represented, you know. The, uh, Intersounds is Cuban, you know, like uh, this cat's Dominican. You know, Rodi or yeah. DJ that we book, he's Dominican. Okay, cool. We, we're going to roll up. We feel comfortable because that's how it is, you know. Like, you want to feel like, oh, okay, I'm, re- I'm being represented. It's not just all oh, Mexicans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you, you, from early on when you started doing these parties, like at Blue Martini, yeah. like in 2014, 15, right? Yeah. And to where we are now, like I remember, you you guys were you started the first big party on the strip, which yes, was the sale at Omnia, right? Yeah, the sale Latin Sundays and the Latin patio. Sundays. Yes, sir. and I remember when that launched. It was you and Maven Jason, right? Correct. Yes, and uh, Richard, right? Richard Candido, shout out to him. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Um, and you and it was a big deal because I was like, yo, that's I've never seen. A Latin party on the strip. It was know? a monthly though, right? It was. It was went to a monthly to a bi weekly. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think it's weekly. When did that start? That was two thousand. Uh, it was. It was in the midst of like. It was 18, like a year after 18. Despacito, right? It was a little 18. bit. Eighteen. <laughs> I remember because me and me and me and Exa were speaking, and uh, there was this one DJ. I'll bleep his name in the venue, but it, uh, he was like, "Yo, this shit is gonna die. This Latin movement is not going anywhere." I'm like, dude, I think it might get to the strip. He's How? like, he's you, Mexican. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? It'll never get to the fucking strip. This shit is whack. Blah blah blah. And now it's like the biggest shit out. And yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy to see that. And especially because, you know, you brought the sales Sundays or whatever. Yeah. It, it was scary though, too, because I'm like, okay, I've never heard like a thrown in a big room or this merengue shit because uh, what actually wasn't around or wasn't popular yet. So right. there was no big room sounds. So I'm like, how the fuck am I going to program this? I don't want to play in Suavemente and it sounds weird, but it, it it took me a minute. I'm, like, I'm going to blend it with EDM sounds, EDM remixes, because, you know, it's Vegas. And with reggaeton, maybe some Mumbaton remixes. Right. And it just started, you know, now I become, but now I play at all this, like Elliot Beach, all these, all these clubs. Yeah. And I'm playing reggaeton for 30 minutes straight. 20, and and I, don't, I don't get nervous no more. Mm-hmm. At first I was like, how the fuck am I going to build it or create this big room Latin sound? That's but pretty- when you guys started Omnia, you guys were in the outside patio though. Correct. Yes. We went to the outside patio into the um, Art of Omnia. Art of Omnia. And then our one year anniversary, we did the chandelier. We did uh, the big, the big, big room. room. Yeah, the big room. We did it with the La Ghetto, and it was, it was really dope. It was That's really crazy. Dope. Yep. We I, was, I was very, very happy and proud of y'all. Thank you. For that. Because I thought, and the thing is, like, there were a lot of people like this. This is like, this is all a phase or a trend. Yep. Mm, and yeah. the, well, the, the, I, mean, I can see that. I mean, I don't, I well, don't blame the, them. Well, the problem is, is that when we look at, like, the American market, right? The top yeah. 40 market, <laughs> anything that's ethnic or, you know, like, anything ethnic, like dance hall or, like, Latin music, it comes and it goes. It's yeah. like a phase, right? Mm-hmm. So then, so when, when they saw this, they're like, oh, it's just going to be another phase. But it, it ended up staying because in the end it was like they um, because I feel like the internet and like you know the music that was coming out mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily controlled by like white record labels anymore. Not anymore. So like the music was going out there and it was unstoppable. Like you couldn't stop it and you couldn't stop these artists. Couldn't. And it's one of the great things about you know digital music and streaming. Yep. Is that the artists started having more control over shit. And then the music was going out there and it was speaking to the people 100%. directly. There wasn't like a gatekeeper being it like, wasn't. okay, we're not going to put this out because Latin music's not popping right now or something like yeah. that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is basically like Hollywood Studios 
being like, you know, only Marvel movies are selling, so we're not going to make any other movies anymore. So 100%. like, even if you have a great script, they're like, we're not going to do that. Stuck and make money. But it was like now is this digital age, right? So streaming's out there, and the music was just going out, and it was it wasn't getting filtered by anyone, which I think was great. That's I could a, be wrong, no, but you I know. think I know you're right. Yeah. that's it. Um, you know, like like look at Bad Bunny; he's with Rima Records now, like which is a small little label. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that I thought he was on a major label. Until no, recently. little ass label. Rima's no one. Does he own? He owns everything. He right? owns like ninety. I heard it's a ninety ten deal. He owns. So 90%? Rima's like, I'll take ten percent of a hundred million dollars. Go ahead, bro. I'll sign you. Yo, I mean, like, there's a big wow. history behind him, but too, it's a long story. But that's why Bad Bunny got out of that deal with DJ Luyan. Because Luyan wasn't letting him release the album. He's, you're not ready. Bad Bunny's like, bro, I can release an album. And that's when they kind of split. And that Mia record, that was their ending point. Mia with Drake, Luyan's like, I'll release it if you give me the royalties. Not all of them, but give me some of the royalties for Mia. Cool. And that's when Bad Bunny just launched, when he released his first album. And then from there, boom, just took off. No wonder that record was just a, like a throwaway. Yeah. Like, it was. It, a, it was, a, it was he did it. Like, I keep the royalties, but whatever. I mean, it's not exactly like that, but the rest of the albums is his. Uh, the Por Siempre, the, the one with the X and the, and the right, 100. Right, right, right. And then from there, Bad Bunny became a phenomenon and then no offense to Luyan but you, you dropped the bag on the biggest fucking artist in the world man. right yeah I saw that Bad Bunny's making like 7 to 8 million he made 90, every night he made 91 million in one month I mean his tour did obviously he's gotta pay out you know a lot of shit that's but. fucking crazy yeah but seeing the numbers from a promoter side or you know what I mean yeah, yeah. you know when, when someone throws a show like that there's obviously a promoter involved when you're a promoter and the artist it's like the, the most insane like I don't know, like how you said, there's no more people controlling the market. You know, when it comes to the record labels, well, now the artists are doing the same thing with the live entertainment. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's that's kind of like us. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's what we are. We're, we're, we're DJs. We're also, you know, promoters. You know? Not to talk smack either. Like, I don't have, um, that's why I left the strip, man. I, I feel I was controlled. I had so many ideas and vision. And I'm like, bro, it's a bunch of meetings. I have to go through three people to get an idea across, a bunch, right. bunch of loopholes. I'm like, bro, fuck this. I'm leaving. I, I want to be able to go to one person, be like, bro, I got this idea. Well, it might not work, or it might, boom. If it does, it's, it's going to happen. Right. And that's it. And that's it. everything. Like I told AR, man, I told our biggest obstacle is going to be 2020. After this, we're going to take off because we had to deal with masks. Oh, we had to brother. deal with people sitting down. You know, you know everybody knows Thomas. that. Thomas. Right? <laughs> Hummus, like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Hummus there was, and gummy worms. There was a point in time where you, if you had a lounge and license, you had to have food in front of you. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. Bro. So everyone had hummus because it's easy. Yeah, hummus, <laughs> and pita and chips, pita. and fucking uh, gummy worms <laughs> at Disco P. But I told Aaron, is that what they were? They were serving yeah. gummy worms, gummy yes. worms, <laughs> with every purchase. <laughs> That's fucking. You act like you act like you were helping put that shit together. Yeah, like like you, you had know, to put it up. I enjoyed them. Ar was, was in I love the back AR, with bro. a basket putting love hummus AR, and <laughs> chips together. Put the chips around the oh, hummus. We would put the we put the conchas at the at the tables. Oh yeah, we put the conchas at the tables because you can't have people touch what other people touch you know what i mean stuff like that but Bye. it's i miss those gummy worms ryan gonna lie <laughs> putting the gummy now, worms in the bowl Sorry. yeah <laughs> not that ass it was what it was, yeah like they got another slam see that ass is not west coast you know, like, same thing see, exile pause out. exile like <laughs> i i, I want to give you some credit here because i feel like you you've been through a lot like you, you know i right. you parted ways with the sale right on omnia right correct like, yes when did you part ways with them uh, it was 2019. You, you, 2019. You and Jason, Maven Jason, started that party with Rich. Or Richard Kennedy, yeah, R- correct. Richard, right? Yeah. And I then, would say I was more of the DJ, but I was kind of like, you know, throwing ideas in there. And, yeah. you know, because I, I come from a DJ standpoint, right? We know the music and so, the culture. Yeah. So after how many years you left? Uh, we were there for, I think, two years from 2017 to 19. And then you left? Yes. That party's still around. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So Yo Yoli's there. She's carrying the torch on for the sale, that party. Yeah, killing it. Killing yeah, it. They're, they're doing great. Hey, she's Latina. Doing great. So it's, cool yeah. to, it's cool to have another like Latina. I, I don't even hate on that at all. I'm like, yo, that's cool. Another Latino, Latina yeah. is, is doing that. Like, yeah. It isn't like, I'm trying to get racial, but it's not like uh, un, like somebody else is doing it. Wasn't it wasn't like never picking up the torch. I'd be a little bit like, damn, like, oh, fuck. That's Why never, even- man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. I, I think he was trying to say- you can't even okay. say Pareo. I, 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 I thought you were saying say maybe- I, well, it's, it's like, I thought he was trying to say like like a black dude. Not, not, not a color purple. Like, it's like me doing dance hall, bro. I don't, I don't know how to rock the like like dance hall set. Or- if five basically, <laughs> yeah, basically, you don't want someone just doing it for the check, right? Yes. yes. And, right, da- yeah. and, like, and then yeah. going on like- And I see what she's doing. She's bringing a lot of dope ass ideas there and everything like that. And she's passionate. Like going on a Beat Source Latin playlist and just playing that shit. Exactly. Those hits. Exactly. That's, that's he did pretty, not. Yeah. 
but shout out to, yeah. yeah, but shout out to Beat Source. <laughs> yeah, right. hey, just tell me. Hey, hey, those playlists come clutch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I see. I know what you're saying. Like yeah. yeah, but but look, there's so many Latin parties now. There's Deseo with Yo Yo Lee. Yeah. There's um, Ilya Beach has been bringing Dynamic out from San Diego mm-hmm. once a month. And then there's Daylight with Maven Jason. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, what is it? Neon, Neon Vibra. Neon Vibra. Uh, Elliot was us too as well. We did a, a, a marketing deal. We did like a cross promotion, stuff like that with artists and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so. I mean, you've been you've been through like what? You've been going through this for almost eight years, mm-hmm. right? In Las Vegas. And you've been humble. I mean, there's been a couple times where you kind of, you've been drunk and you called one of us. And, and you cursed like, me the fuck <laughs> out. And you cursed us out. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why don't you? Hold on, hold on. He was like, like "Why don't I get a fucking baseball card? Yo. You're Latin. You're not representing me." Blah 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 blah. Yes, Yo, so I was we, like, "A fucking so baseball card." What was that? We so there was like an end of the year in like 2000. <laughs> that was like 2019. 19. Before 19, the pandemic, we made baseball cards for like Jay Espinosa, for Kalazak. Yeah, for sure. Ross Wong. Uh, other, a lot of all Latinos, these DJs. A lot of Latinos. All these DJs, and then I think you you were probably drunk and then you and, you know and mad or something. And he, he fucking he went called off. Jamie on was like, yeah. "I don't get a." Baseball Baseball car, motherfucker. Like, at four in the man, morning. I was like, send location, send location. Yeah, he wanted to fight me. Nah, and I was like, that serious. And look, like, honestly, you scared Jamie. No, I sent it, it on the group chat. Serious. It was on the group Chill. chat. I think, I, was, yo, I think he flipped out on D Miles. Yeah, he too. flipped out on D Miles too. Yeah. When? D Miles, how <laughs> <same laughs> nice. <laughs> so he flipped out on me, and I was like, yo, I'm not taking this shit personal because you're actually my friend. We've had meetings about you, you know that? Yeah, it's all good. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a character. You know, I just always felt like I was the little brother. Like, I always got But you know what? Like, I, I yeah. understand why you came at me because I feel like 2019 you got kind of left for dead. Hundred like, percent. You got kind of left for dead, and I didn't give you a baseball card because I'm Mexican and we're both Mexican. You gave me a Dodger card, man. But I didn't give him one, and I think <laughs> that came out because you have got left for dead from your partners yeah. or whatever the case may be. I mean, I'm other. human. I think we all fucked up. <laughs> I get that, but 2019 you had a. It was like a. It was it was a hard year. Hundred right? percent. You split ways with the sale, and you split ways with. Um, maybe even Jason for a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, also I got let go of chaos. You oh, know, the chaos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, chaos that, that clothes. Was, that was my biggest like uh, where I really wanted to punch the air. You know. Oh yeah, because you because they they had Bad Bunny for the first oh, time over God. there. No, uh, actually, Bad Bunny was at Dre's. I did that. Oh no no no. Okay. 2017. No, they had Ozuna. Or something, Ozuna. Right? No, it was Bad Bunny though. But it was Bad Bunny, Ozuna, uh, J Balvin, and Anuel. And you were headlining all that shit. Yeah, you were but, headlining. It. But yeah, but there was somebody there that was hating on me. Not hate. I don't think they hated me, but they wanted to use their crew. Right. So I left Deseo because uh, I was promised something at Chaos. Cool, I get there, do three, four gigs for like the artist, and then get booted. Mm. And then, you know, that's where I, I start having a different vision. So I not that was like I was younger, you know, I was my check, that was my uh my look. Now I'm like, damn, what am I doing? And then oh, start- so so you left the sale to do chaos. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Because uh But like, but as a DJ, you're like but I, no, I wanted to do both, but I felt like it happens on the strip. I, that's why I don't miss Chaos is like the newer club. I just feel like you can't do Tao and you can't do hockey. Or what's it's the other? radius. Uh, uh, yeah, Zoot yeah. Group. Like it's, you can't do, I mean, there's some DJs that can. That's why I never understood why I can't do both. And it, it kind of came off. It's and I was the, younger. I didn't know how to yeah. play politics. It's the radius clause, right? In the end. Yeah, page there three. There was no radius. I'm not that big. <laughs> it was, I'm not big. And that's like Calvin Harris shit, though. No, but I mean, it, it's it's still a, an issue. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the radius clause, pretty much. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's Air quotes, right? Air quotes. Radius okay. clause. Yeah. So that's what happened. That's that's the whole truth. And then after chaos, I did Bad Bunny, uh, J Balvin twice, Osuna, and then um, it's rough because in like at that point in your career, like yo, I'm gonna be at the newest club, the biggest, the, the biggest the hottest, club, the hottest club in the hottest at club. The moment. Yeah. And then a couple months later, it fucking closes. So well, no, it, no, 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 no. I right? didn't. Get, I didn't get let go before. before I got let go before it closed. I did yeah. like a month there. Like four, I did four or five other nights, and yeah. then like we're using someone else. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Right. I just left Omnia, another big ass mega nightclub. Yeah, yeah. Who is? It's, to me, it's, it means a lot to me to to be with you guys, and you know, and now you want to let me go. So I was like, in distraught, like fuck, bro, like. I was like, pissed. I know you was happy when you found out chaos is closing, right? They're like, yes. He's like, good, good for you, mom. Well, not Karma. really, because it, at the same <laughs> time. I, 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 I didn't hate on the people. I just hated on that one person that wanted to keep their people in. Also, I'm very like proud of my heritage. And I didn't like, I said, I didn't like, like I'm proud. I'm glad Yoli took the reins because she's Latina. I didn't like seeing a non-Latino go on fucking beat source and just download the hits and, and mix it with EDM remixes. Open and up do for Bad the Bunny. sale. And, and I can tell the crowd's like, okay, bro. 
where is the Latin speaking at? Where's the the ambiance on the mic? You know, when you do like dance hall, for example, yeah. you do a lot of like dance hall like sayings and shit on the mic. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would I would go when I wasn't there. I mean, when I wasn't booked there, I would just go hear the DJ. I'm like, damn, they replaced me for this. Like, this is why I can tell the crowd just like, fuck, hurry up, man. When's Bad Bunny come out? Basically, they were putting EDM like and open format DJs like on a night when Bad Bunny or Zuna was there. Mm-hmm. So they're playing like EDM. They're like, look, we don't want to cater to a Latin crowd, even though Bad Bunny brings a Latin ca- a crowd. We want to play for the tables, which are basically white people. Exactly. Wow. So oh, we that want, is exactly so, great. So, that's, that's so chaos was like, we have white tables, and I don't care if general admission is la- Latinos. Mm-hmm. They're like, let's cater to the bottle service. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem that he was talking about. And that's honestly... One of the reasons why chaos closed because there was this this weird segregation. Identifi- no, there wasn't like an identity to the club because they were trying to like they were booking hip hop well, acts and they were booking Latin acts, but trying to keep it like quote unquote white. White, Dude, that, I, you know, you but, literally hit nail nail on the head. Like, yeah. Exactly, that's what they told me. I'm that's like, why I told you all to let me speak so I could, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was one of the things. While I was DJing, I was playing all this like a these remixes. I was keeping the club like, but the guy who I just like came up to me. He's like, bro, no one's buying bottles. Go EDM now for two hours. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna make fucking people buy bottles, I mean, it, bro. This is the problem with it. It's like it's not his fault, and it's not your fault. The problem is it was a weird time. It was just a transition time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I Where guess. it wasn't like if he, if he did that now, it would be completely different you know what i'm saying like it was just one of those weird transition times where it was like you know we have to kind of teeter the line between you know so it was just like there wasn't look if there was a latin tech house you know if there was more goracha coming out at that time it'd be a different fucking it'd be a different thing you know what i'm saying it's just it just so happens at that time it was just a little too early and you know what I'm saying for everything, but yeah. not only that, I it mean, was tough. I mean, not only that, cricket, but chaos had a lot of fucking money invested in that shit, so they had to make yeah. up a lot of money catering to the tables. They're spending ten thousand dollars opposed to general admission. I, I got like, a few drinks. I, I knew it was a little problem. We went to like one of the opening nights there, and yeah. they were they were like doing like the old hip hop, anti baggy like no jeans or with holes in it or rips, no, mm. no sneakers, no, sneakers. Yeah. no hats, and we were just like, yo. It's fucking two. When did they open? 2018, 19, 19. No, 2019. 19. Like, I'm like, yo, it's 2019, and y'all sweating sneakers and like, like y'all sweating the tire right now. The, like, the thing is, they, they open up March of 2019 and they close fall, uh, October, oh, October, damn, October. Oh my god. Yeah. They had Remember Cardi- when we <laughs> no, went? I thought it was Cardi 2018. That's no? 2019. Cardi Cardi B was supposed to be her last show. And they, they didn't yeah. even do it. I'm like, like yo, how you how you gonna do like yo no hats or no none of this shit? Mm-hmm. Like everyone's wearing. I think we lied and we yeah. said that we're DJs and yeah, we had to lie together. Yeah, I remember that together. podcast. So you guys, talked I, the, you had a whole chaos episode. Yeah, you guys lied. There. Oh, I literally no, told I, I told these motherfuckers like I'm never coming back here. Yeah. Like why would I come back here? What do I have to wear? Like a banana? Like we got to dress like back in two thousands? Yeah. We Republic. have to wear like Kenneth Cole shoes and Banana Republic. But that was, that was the opening night that we went. And then no, we it still, wasn't, it wasn't an opening night. Oh, shit, let me hit up Ross. Uh, everyone, <laughs> every. <laughs> 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 Bro, I, get, get, I gotta get my Steve Harvey suit out and <laughs> shit and come out. Uh, you know what I'm saying, Adams, baby? Yeah, I mean that was that was a tough time for you. I, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I and I know how you feel because it's like. You make a decision. You you take a chance. You take a risk, and you try to go after something that you think is gonna like really help your career. Like, yo, this is gonna be the turning point, and then it just kind of like it's out of your hands. It's like it falls yeah. apart a little bit. Yeah. But then all it is, I love these stories though. See, I love getting knocked down and motherfuckers getting back up. Yeah. And then like now you now that's why I want to give you props. It's like look at where you are right now. You didn't stop. And, and we had meetings, yo. We had meetings about you because they'd be like, yo, Exile just like flipped out on me and shit. Like he's going, and we had meetings and I said, yo, yo, he's good people's. Like this is, yeah. you know I what just, I'm saying? Like, yo, I know. Air, yeah. Air saw it like, because yeah. he saw like, I felt like, okay, so he was coming in doing shows. He comes from the show world to hard tickets and everything else. Yeah. He came in, partnered with me and we partnered up. And I was kind of like more of the old head, like miserable, like the kind of like the guy who had like, 
like 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 five hits and went on tours and I was a kind of new kid and he'd always kind of see me bitter like fuck bro we're not packed fuck why am I not this why don't we book this all right why don't we here right. again and he's like yo you gotta chill it's gonna we're gonna get there again you just gotta get back on it because I was going through mentally I'm like fuck bro I did chaos I did Dre I, and it was my ego talking to me I'm like fuck I'm out back here right. I saw other motherfuckers winning like on the Latin shit I'm like I should be up there but I'm like nah check your fucking ego stay in your fucking lane but so, I, you know it was, tough. it was tough but what's great about that right is that it took you to another environment and that's why you guys went to downtown and that was the perfect place to be, especially after the pandemic. Yeah. I think that worked out. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it's a good, like everything happens for a fucking reason. Yeah. And then it's like- We don't see it at first. No, you don't see no, it, no, right? No, but that's why I think it's so great is that, you know, it's, it's like you said, your heart is like you, you're bitter and everything, but then now you have this, now you have AR to kind of balance. And he's, yeah, he was helping me out. He's kind of like that shit. blind young hope, you know, that we <laughs> yeah. all don't have. I believe it. I believe you it. You know, like I have I that with Jamie all the time. Yeah. I, have, I have it with Jamie all the time, man. He's yeah. like, oh, we're doing great. I'm like, nah, man, that, that, this ain't shit. That, that, that was me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, we just sold 50 <laughs> tickets in a pandemic. Chill. I'm like, fuck that. Like, oh, we didn't, bro. I go, bro oh, yeah, yeah, Kirk yeah. be like, yo, what we do? I'm like, dude. <laughs> We're f- like, I'm like, we're gonna get it. How the fuck are we gonna get it? I don't know. <laughs> he's but like, we're gonna get there. <laughs> he's like, he's like, yo, our YouTube numbers are going up. It's like, yo, we used to get 50 views. Now we're at 200. I'm like, yo, 200 views on the YouTube video. I like that, shit. bro. You know? Yeah. And bro, then I'm, he's like, no, that's really good. Like, and I'm just like, shut the fuck up, Jamie. I'm like, that we ain't have, shit. You know? And then I, and now we're looking at the numbers. He's like, wow, we're really doing some numbers. Yeah, and now like, we're doing like 1,500. Like, it was at least over a thousand and shit. You know? Oh, but like, we're, we're meeting our subscriber count, yeah. which is a 10. percent You have to make 10. percent I'm like, dude, we're tripling this shit. That's amazing. And he's just like, okay, maybe we're doing. And then we, when we do the algorithms yeah, yeah. and we count Bro, shit. Bro, is like the is like always sees a positive of everything. Yeah. Air, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I'm like the other guy. I'm like, fuck, man. We we did 15. Like, I don't know. We'll talk about shit. And he'll like flip it like, nah, but at least this happened. I'm like, fuck that air. We- now there's a couple no. times where he convinced me. He's like, no, bro, just be mad, bro. Please, just be mad. <laughs> yeah. bro. Just no, like, no. Okay. Yeah. Kirk is like, fuck looking at the good thing. Let's look at the bad shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude. I don't like looking at the good. He's like, let's yeah. look at the shit where we're in bad. And That's what is, yeah. But like I'm Jay like, Cortez, I, Jay Cortez, we went fucking through it, bro. Like, really? not not like me and him, but like, dog, that show was fucking, bro. That was this year, right? Oh, this year, yeah, April. Yeah, yeah. AR, that was stress. To, that was stress. AR, AR, AR handled the stress. <laughs> I was a I was a punching bag, and but I loved holy it. Holy fuck, bro! Like that was crazy. Sometimes you gotta be the punching it's, bag. That was our first big big artist. Yeah. So we, I'm like, holy fuck! Like this is this is major. Like. I didn't know how, because like I said, AR comes, I wanted to talk about that. AR comes from the show world, how to handle, uh, I didn't know what the fuck um, an advance was before. Mm-hmm. Hard tickets versus uh, soft, soft tickets. tickets. Yeah. Like, this motherfucker put me on data. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Comp tables, but who cares? Like, I come from, <laughs> so we come from two different, where I come from nightlife, where I comp tables, fill the room up, programming, blah, blah. He comes from like, that world, like data. I'm like, bro, no one gives a fuck about data. No one opens an email, bro. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. So... I mean, it's like a, it's a good, it's a perfect marriage, man. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. It led you, it led you to where this, you know, where you are right now. And I think it's great that you guys balance each other out. It's like it's so perfect. And I love hearing, I love like when I have DJs, like I, I talk to DJs all the time. Yeah. I always tell these guys, I never want to get a DJ when he's killing it for the first time. Well, that uh, perfect because when you finally believed it, I think it was a year after Altura started, and you finally start seeing shit. Yeah. You were on me every fucking week. When are you going to put me on the podcast? When are you going to put me on the podcast? I think it wasn't every week. Shit. You start hitting him up and then and D Miles. And what did I tell and you? you? Were very what did aggressive I tell you? And, and he told, what did he say? What did I tell you? You kept hitting me. You said, yo, I threw this popping. We should be on it. What did I tell you? I didn't say it like that. You no, did no. say that. I would my text message like, I'm coming off. Like, you wouldn't talk to me like that. No. No, but he still <laughs> talked to you like yeah, that. Because <laughs> me and him, me and him are like, we're, we're real friends, but we're like bros. So I see when he would go off on me. So he would be like, Yo, why I'm, put me on, put me on, put me on. And Crick is like, he's not ready. And I listen to him because he knows everything. I get it, I get it. So, but it was no, never, no, no, no. I, I, I never knew. came from a, a place of like, I hate because when I told you, hey man, come see what, what, what I do. I, know, I didn't I mean know. it like, yo, I, oh, see, no, I was like, no, bro, no. please. Because, but when you come to our party, we get excited. I'm like, bro, we got fucking crooked and we yeah. never came. I'm like, Yo, Neva's fucking, bro. I want to get the bottles up, like, bro. Whatever you guys want, like. I had to really drag him out, you know. <laughs> no, I'm but I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. <laughs> no, I went out. I went out. I went no, out never, never went out. No, he went out by himself. Went solo by myself. Yeah, yeah, he was chilling with us for a minute. Yeah, man. But I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. We go to your party, but you won't see us because we're way in the back and yeah. we can't even get to you to say what's up. 
Yeah, I'll text I, you I don't later wanna on. Fucking push through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're at Commonwealth, you know? so it's it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. smoother. You can just do this with consent, and you'll have a great time. <laughs> I do you know that. What I, mean? do that. <laughs> I, I make like, sure to put my when yo when I'm walking through a pack room. I do the. Back I put of my, my I arms the back up. of the hand. Back of the hand. Because <laughs> I don't want no shorties being like, oh, why are you grabbing my? I'm like, yo, I'm not grabbing uh-huh, nothing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just I'm just walking through. No, no, no. But look, like. I remember what I told you and I said like inside when you were when you wanted to come on like the podcast yeah inside I said they're gonna be bigger Mm -hmm. and I'd rather talk to him when he's at that point and they're bigger got it and I can't and the thing is like I don't like DJs like when DJs first pop they're they're they have this like a different perspective on success because they don't see it ending. Mm. And you need to see you need to have everything taken away from you and you need to build it back up for you to have perspective. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. You'll take because, it for granted as much. You know that you can you that you can lose. Yeah, I don't want yeah, exactly. I don't want a motherfucker who's won like the his first Super Bowl on the show. I yeah. want him I want the dude that won two Super Bowls, lost the Super Bowl Maybe got traded. Got kicked off. The got, team. Traded got traded and <laughs> went to another team, to a shit team, and then won three Super Bowls after. That. That's the uh, motherfucker. That's when uh, I want to. That's when I want to talk to you as a DJ. Got it. Mm-hmm. That makes I, I want to hear because I don't. When you're at the top of the mountain, you're like, yo, the world is my Everything, oyster. Everything's golden. Everything is great. I and, and, and all I do is I hear them talk about, man, I'm gonna do production. I'm gonna get this rapper. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that, and then nothing happens. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'd rather talk to the motherfucker that loses some shit, comes yeah. back, has perspective, and it's like, yo, I, I I was at my lowest, and this is what I had to do to mentally get myself out of it, hundred percent, and to and to get back to where yeah. I wanted to be, and. I figured out because it's like, yo, in the beginning, when we get successful, we're doing anything to make money. Yep. We're doing anything. We're listening to this guy. Oh, whatever you want. You know, like the club owner, I'll do whatever you want. The promoter, I'll do whatever you want. When you lose everything and they turn their back on you and you're by yourself and you have to build something on your own. Builds character. You build character, but you, you also end up executing something that's more you and not them. Yeah. You're not compromising yourself for the nightclub, for the promoters, or for the check. Now you're building something that's you and it's uh, and sustainable. Yeah. That's why I wanted to talk to you later. Oh, that, thank you for that. Do you understand? I, but I watch and I see everything that's going on. I see the ups and downs. I see your character, you know, and, and, and how you are with people. Yeah. So I want to say, like, I have a lot of respect for you and, and you. how you've navigated yourself to this and mm-hmm. everything that's happening right now and everything that's going to come even more for Altura and what you guys are doing, I think it's going to be bigger, and I think you you deserve it. Thank you, man. Thank I appreciate you, man. that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, thank you for the words, man. I appreciate that. No, I, I really I mean, respect you, and I love, and that's why, you know, and that's why, you know, our five-year anniversary is coming up a, on October 26th, oh, on shit. Wednesday. Also happens to be my birthday. A what? Mm-hmm. Huh? My birthday. Are you Scorpio? Me, mis cumpleaños. <laughs> mis cumpleaños. <laughs> mi quinceañera de crooked. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, should we do a quinceañera theme? We should. We should so, do tiempo de bar. So, the, so that Wednesday, we Road is teaming up with Altura. Yes, sir. And we're going to take over Commonwealth in downtown Las Vegas. Altura is going to be downstairs. Road podcast is going to be upstairs. And I'm flying out. Moma, hey, Moma's hey. gonna he's gonna do his well, I guess <laughs> oh, like a first? concert for the first time. Nah. <laughs> I gotta help him out. Yo, nah. We're gonna be with Moma, right? So Moma's gonna be there, and then Marty Rock's gonna be there too. Like Marty Rock just happened. You know what happened with Marty Rock? What he got pissed off at one of the episodes because um, we were talking about like reggaeton and Bad Bunny. Yeah, and he was like, "Man, you you don't know your history." You know, he's like, "This shit is real. I'm Puerto Rican. You gotta like talk about you." You know, it's like I need to come on the podcast, and he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna fly out." You know, October 25th, and I'm like, "Yo, why don't you just stay another day?" Yeah, and do do a set and, and do do a set. At, so Marty Rush from New York is a Puerto Rican cat. Yeah, it's Puerto yeah. Rican cat. Yeah. So he was like, "Fine, fuck it." I'll, oh, he needs you know, to come downstairs then with us. Yeah. So then, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I told him he's gonna rock with yeah. y'all. Hey, bro, he's gonna yeah, rock. Yeah. Yo, this is lit. Yeah. So then, so we got. MoMA and Marty Rock on Wednesday, October 26th in Las Vegas. And your nice. birthday. And, and your it's going to be my and birthday. And five-year anniversary of Volpac. And five-year anniversary. anniversary. Oh, yeah. What's <laughs> And DJ City and Beat Source are going to be a part of that, too. So I love it. They're a part I of that shit. Fire. And, uh, yo, I'm telling you, man, like, 
That's gonna be. That's. I'm looking forward to this. I'm. I'm prepping fucking a set now. And I, and I love that Momo's gonna like spin. Like I don't. know. He hasn't done Vegas. I, I mean, I think he did like a. I'm ready for a set. I think I, this is Momo's first Vegas gig. Is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. We we did Vegas when we did um a jet. Oh, my birthday too. Wow. Damn. Damn. Jet. 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 Yeah. Jet. Was that was like 2007. It was him, Rockthecon. Riz? Okay, but that was a long time. I'm telling you, recent though? Was Riz and that? We yeah. don't have Ace of Spades. But it was a bunch of DJs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was going to bring the whole thing. <laughs> but yo, that's going to be, I mean, I think that's going to be crazy. That's gonna be, it's going to be culture. That's dope. That's I, what I love. I, that's I follow, what I, yes. I follow his, his fucking party. I'm like, bro, this is so tight. And I, and I want to kind of let motherfuckers know that there's some dope shit going on off the strip. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because like we could, like honestly, I could have a road party on any club yeah. on the strip, but I'm like, yo, let's go off the strip where this this shit is popping off and it's special. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to this shit. So I'm, I'm looking I'm looking forward yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah. It's gonna, gonna be dope, crazy. Man. I want motherfuckers to come there and like listen to Moma, play Afro beats. I'm so a that, piano. that's what's dope about our people. People yeah, are like, yo, this know? is different. What the fuck? Okay. Exactly, bro. Yo, Cause they yeah. And then you're gonna have Marty Rock spinning, you know, New York style, East Coast. Yeah. You know, fucking reggaeton, reggaeton. and Latin, Latin, Latin music, which y'all, I think it's gonna be crazy, man. I think it'll be so it's much fun. Be, it's Plus, it's Halloween too. Like, Halloween. Oh yeah. my God. Like, all we, the dr- we've been talking about what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna do like 2000s shit or whatever. Yeah. 90s, 2000s theme. So, we're, we're, me and Air are gonna do the reggaeton era of 2000s. Yes, sir. <laughs> like Daddy, Daddy Yankee. Yankee doing a big ass fucking. I'm Baby Bash. I'm gonna be honest. Without, <laughs> without the case, without the case, without the case. Without, there's a case. <laughs> Wait, no, that was a SPM, wasn't it? Yeah, that's SPM. Bro. Yeah, it's not. They're yeah. the same crew. I mean, so Baby Bash is all good. So you're gonna be you're gonna be Baby Bash or no? <sighs> to be honest, yeah. I gotta play Cyclone, so I'm gonna have to run the curls, bro. Okay. <laughs> all right, cool. So we got Baby Bash. And then wait, Neva's gonna be Tego. Yeah, yes. we're gonna put. I think he should be, Romel, be Romel Tego Calderon. Romel Santos. Tego. Tego Calderon. Tego, okay, Tego, okay. Tego's cool. Or, you just have are, to, we really, yeah. are we really doing this? Are we really, like, I really want to coordinate. You have yeah. to practice wasa wasa. Wasa wasa. Wasa wasa, yeah. Wasa wasa. Is that from uh, yeah. Furious Fire, the Fast boom, and Furious? Boom, boom, boom. Where's it from? Wasa wasa. Boom, wasa, boom, hey. Boom, boom, boom. Lean back. Boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Lean back. What are you going to be? <laughs> big pun. Oh, you going to be big, big pun? <laughs> yeah. Body crime. And what's D Miles going to be? D was supposed to be, is he doing He's doing hip hop, right? I say Omarion. Omarion. Why? Yeah, Why? Wait, didn't you say Ching? You said Chingy. Right? I said Chingy, and then I said Joel Santana. Joel Santana, all right. And Bow Wow. Okay. Bow Wow. All through him? Just throw out the nice Ching thing. <laughs> just chop. Yeah. have four different costumes. <laughs> Every hour he switches. Yo, D, it's 11.45. What is the costume? <laughs> 11.45 to one is Bow Wow. Wait, what are you going to be, Cricket? He's got set times. I, I got to be Jin, right? You got to be Jin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want to do like the change clothes era where it's Ooh. like the blazers yeah. with the button ups uh, yeah. and the oversized uh, the oversized fitteds and shit. Oh, over man. your ears? <laughs> yeah, over my ears. Yeah. Maybe I'll even do like the, the paper brick. towel uh, headband okay. that uh, Jada Kiss had. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. I think that would be fun though. That, that thing. Is it be fun? Yeah. And who you going to be? That's how who you going to be? I don't even know. I don't know. Maluma. Um, Hell, my I little can't my little baby. For the 2000s. <laughs> you for the 2000s. Shit. Actually, no. Probably Daddy Yankee. I mean, fuck. Or Don Omar. I mean, I don't know. I don't nah. know. I look like Arcangel is the most related. You got to be Wisin from Wisin and Yandel. Wisin and Yandel? Oh, you should shave. What does he have? He's, he had like, the, like, the really pencil uh, Bro, I'm beard. not doing it. Nah. Yeah, you got to oh. cut the beard down. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. That era with the fucking I? shape up with the shaped so, beards was horrible. Yeah. You know, like Fat Joe still does that shit, right? Yeah. Fat Joe still oh. has like it's the like, two. It's still like his shit is painted on. Yeah, the two thousands, <laughs> the thin ass, the thin ass mustache and yeah. goatees. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you could tell the motherfuckers' age when they got that. That. Oh man, that, that's an OG. Oh, yeah. That's a triple that lineup, right? Or <laughs> yeah. that shape up, whatever. That's OG trip OG lineup. Yeah, yeah. No oh, fuck that. <laughs> Yeah. That'll be fun though. It's gonna be fun. I mean, honestly, you should just show up and, f- and find out what he dresses up as yeah. at this point. Honestly. I was going. I don't know. I think about he it. does go all out though. I, I do. Have you seen out. him dress up as fucking the Star Wars characters? He goes I go fully all out. You'll see me. I'll, I'll, see I'll pick some. What's the one that you it's did hard. not long ago? I did Darth Maul. He did Darth Maul like with the, the whole painting fucking everything. thing. Like, I yeah. thought he said Molly Maul. <laughs> 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 Bro, which Molly Molly you talking Jesus. about? I know, right? I'm, Las Vegas is home. Las Vegas, Las Vegas. The, yeah, not not nineties. Las not, Vegas yeah. is home. The pimp, the, the pimp Molly Molly, right? Yes, not the entrepreneur. Jesus, not yes. symphony. No, no, not, 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 not the producer Molly. Hey, I identify as an entertainer. <laughs> I'm about to say, you know Molly Molly. You know <laughs> the cribble. I was going to be really impressed if he knew. Oh no, man. the eighties yeah. Molly Molly. No, no, I'm very, I'm very uncultured. He's 25, bro. Come on. 
Uh, so wait, the week that we're doing our party, the five year anniversary yeah. on Wednesday, that Saturday you have Tokisha. Yes, yeah. sir. I'm really upset because I'm a I'm big upset. Tokisha. He's the I'm upset. But I literally call air on my bro way too quicker hears about this. Yeah. Oh I'm fucking DJ. And I'm like, bro. I know. There's yo, no, they, can you yo, cancel? Yo, like, can you? Can- Never's a, Never's a big Tokisha fan, but yeah. he's yeah. like, he's like a Tokisha fan. Like, I watched all Her, seasons. Same. Of, he- no, I watched all seasons of Game of Thrones. Uh huh. And he just watched the last season of Game of Thrones. That's the Tokisha. Yo, I'm a new Tokisha oh. fan. Yeah, I ain't no friend. Yeah. It's all good. At least he a fan. Better, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. let me break on him a little. It's bit. all good. To you be too on- positive, man. I'm shut t- his mic off. <laughs> let me shut his mic off. Hey, yo, shut the mic positive, off, bro. <laughs> but she's wild. Have you seen her show? Like she takes her I've panties it, off. Yeah. Bro. She goes crazy. I mean, oh that's why he. Likes oh her. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting sweaty right now. Yeah. The one thing I want to I want to know right is how you guys linked up because like yeah. from what I'm hearing. Like exile, would you say that was maybe your low, like your lowest period, like your lowest time for your career? Like you felt very, oh, just like life. distraught. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. So then, how did you link up with this fucking guy, Ar? Right there? <laughs> yeah, he's Charlie. At, at, at your <laughs> at your lowest, right? At his lowest. <laughs> yo, he's like finally he's cheap. It he, can't get like, any lower. He has no <laughs> hits. He's <laughs> washed. Yo, he's, he's done. No, ah. you you know you're you're like Luke Skywalker when he first got his hand cut off, right? Yeah. Oh brother, how did you run into <laughs> how did you run into Ar? He hit me up. So I was, uh, it, he hit me up and he's, um, I was right, like ending, like, like doing all the nightclubs. He goes, Hey man, he brought me in into the office. It's like, yo, I like what you're doing, blah, blah. I want to, um, you know, have this idea of this party kind of like, you know, cause I was doing another one too as well, but it wasn't as popping. Um, and I was like, nah, man, I was like, I'm popping on the strip. I'm doing this and that, but I'm like, I'm really not no more. But I was like, so cocky he goes, all right. So he painted it for me. This is what got me. I'm like, all right. He's like, all right, how much are you getting at Omnia? How much are you getting at Dre's? How much are you getting at this? And I told him. He goes, all right, cool. Uh, so he did the percentage. So you're making less than one percent, less than one percent of what they're what you're bringing to the table. You're bringing tables in. You're DJing. You're branding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, what if you took home twenty five percent, fifty percent of that? And he did the math. And I'm like, oh, how much is that? He did it on his calculator and he showed me it. I'm like, yo, I'm in. I was like, How the, what the fuck? He goes, bro, this isn't, this isn't, you're not a DJ anymore. You're a partner. And it took me like a fucking year. Like I kept saying, you're a partner in this. You're a partner. I'm like, bro, I don't understand. Cause I, I'm a DJ. I'm like, bro, so when do I DJ? How much am I going to get paid? He goes, bro, you're a partner. Relax. Like it was a lot for me to learn. I didn't understand the show world. And like I said, where he's coming from, but now I totally fucking get it. And it makes a lot more sense for me. And I'm, I'm happy, man. Like, for real, like, shout out to AR. He brought me in. He's like, yo, I want to make you a partner rather than just you come and DJ. So he literally... I a, can I have a, a yeah. question? Yeah. AR, what did you see at Exile to, so, like, want to want him to want to work with him What's but great? not only that what were you doing how did you get into the shows to begin with yo so i quit djing literally i was like yo i can't get in the fucking club no one wants to listen to me i'm like yo i can i was like i can bring a crowd but i'm like 22 like everyone. but why can you bring a crowd where did you like uh, i was doing a lot of hookah lounges that's before the 21 plus uh, tobacco laws came in so i was doing a lot of hookah lounges i can in uh was it henderson hmm and bro, I then my, my my best friend worked the door, and he told me the sales, and I was like, "Huh?" I was like, "I'm getting paid 200 bucks to bring this in," and I was like, "Whatever." Like I was like basically feeling like you know a low spot, and I was like, "Fuck this, I'm gonna go." And well, you felt like on. you were getting played, right? Yeah, I was getting played. Sure, I was getting played, and I was like, "Damn it, I guess I gotta go make music to fucking make some real money," you know? So I actually ended up my home. One of my uh, old friends was working for Revelation. And she was like, oh. Revelation? Yeah, Revelation. What is that? I've never heard of that. Oh, Revelation's a company in Vegas that throws like festival style raves. Oh, shit. Yeah. And uh, I came in as, a, as an intern, and my only job was to connect the agent and the manager and myself as Revelation, like represent and just schedule everyone's arrival, their set times, and drinks. You were like, <laughs> a, you were like an artist liaison. Yeah. Yeah. Artist, li- yeah. Artist relations and artists. And- yeah. Yeah all that but uh after that i started showing them i knew photoshop and website design and basically i knew how to sell something in our market in vegas yeah to a certain demographic which was <clears throat> about 16 to about 23 and now it's you know what i mean that's that's all the data in my head that i've learned through just djing myself so i just i started growing up the chain and about a year in uh i started i became a, like a marketing director over there wow and i came up with concepts with them and one was Altura. 
And I, I was like, bro, Exile's fucking killing it. And I was like, I was like, he needs something of his own. You know what I mean? So you like, saw Exile as like a, the DJ that you looked up to. Well, I was a consumer. Right. I was a consumer every every t- every time he was at Dre's, at Chaos, or even the Cell. Literally, mm-hmm. I received a hat. I still got the hat. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Exile hat. It was no, after the Cell. We had a Cell merch. The sale yeah, 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 it the was sale by uh, Don Julio. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout to Sam and Don Julio. Yep. It was by Don Julio, and that's yeah. when I was like, "Whoa, that's dope!" I got invited to go to Blue Martini to go see Exile in my head. I'm like, "Yo, this is dope!" Like, you know what I mean? And like, I'm just seeing all this, and I'm like, "Man, I was like, he can kill it if he had his own like concepts and stuff like that." Because I'm like, I obviously understand the club like politics, but I've never been in the club. I've never even spun in the, in the club. I've actually never even been in the club. The only time I've been in the club was actually at Hyde that one time. Literally, oh, one time that HB brought me to your gig, that was the only time I've ever been to the club. Oh, really? I swear to God, <laughs> other than going to Latin club. <laughs> he was like, what the fuck is this Asian guy playing? Yo? Nah, you had the, bro, he had you a- playing hip hop? No, I was like, no, I was like, yo, my boy, my boy's out here. He got the hundreds, uh, what is it, Serato tacos. I was like, yo, my boy's out here. I was like, let's go. And uh, and all that. But I, I literally, the, that was the first thing that came to my head was literally like, yo, eggs out i know the club is not going to give him what he wants to give like the latin wow. culture you know what i mean and all i wanted to do was build the latin culture because yo i'm a consumer i like i like going to latin parties more than i like the hip-hop or you know even raves mm-hmm. you know it's just it's it's more universally fun you know what i mean even if you don't know the music you f- you feel the rhythm you're like man i'll make some up mm-hmm. and no one's gonna really judge you because it's like well, we obviously know you don't know how to dance. So it's just like, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to groove and have fun with it. And, you know, it's a party. It's like big old pachanga. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you're just going in. And it's, I mean, it it made me feel like I felt like at a rave. Because raves were my favorite, you know. I work for EDM company. So, you know, mosh pits and like, you know, in, in house, it's, it's all just grooves. Like, you dance to whatever, you know. Like, literally whatever. So, the whole reason, like. I was like thinking about it was is literally like one no one's doing it and if they're doing it they're not doing it correctly and out of like just like a culture aspect they're doing it because they're trying to monetize on something that's gonna pop it's trendy mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but I also like you know he said he said he quit DJing so ever since I threw that happened I'm like bro you're headlining with me fuck that so he started downloading more records he got better because when he started it wasn't bad but I'm like bro these records are really fucking outdated he goes right, I'm gonna work on this shit boom. Nah, I'm like, yo, you better headline. You better do this. Like, you're part of, I'm gonna, he didn't want to DJ. Nah, I just want to be the background guy, like, the marketing. I'm like, fuck that, you DJ. You already know how to do it. Let's come with me. Like, let's yeah, yeah. So that's what happened. And he had already a picture board. He already had, like, a a, a mock-up of a, of a fucking huge-ass lineup. He goes, bro, imagine you fucking through this, bro. Like, us. I'll do what I did. So put Nicky Jam. I still have it at the house. I, I look at it every fucking day. We're crossing Nikki it Jam. out. Yeah, we're crossing it out. J. Cor- he put a big-ass lineup. He goes, let's do it, bro. I'm like, that'll be fucking tight. I'm um, like that's that's tight, and that's brought um you know took us a little we had you know some bumps because I would think as a DJ I'm like yo where's my pay at bro you're a partner you're getting percentage you're not relax like you know I came as a from a working standpoint yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't come in from a, a business standpoint I love it but I, I elevated not like bragging but like I'm like bro you gotta elevate DJ not I'll do it a poppy bro yeah. they don't they're like bro everybody knows I'm like bro you fucking dope too like, bro it's insane bro <laughs> yeah it's insane I'm like yo I forgot what it felt like to be a DJ <laughs> yeah I'm like bro you're gonna open these shows you're gonna do this like fuck that you're not gonna stay in the back he kept saying nah bro I'm gonna be in the back fuck that let's go you're headlining tonight I'm gonna headline next week and we would alternate it's it's great like you guys had a good marriage where you know AR brought a little like a business side to your, Major, to your he world knows, he knows, yeah. and he brought a little bit like of the DJ, DJ world to, your, to yeah, you and it was, like a, a, it was a great marriage imagine your OG teaching you something you've always wanted to learn like straight yeah. up I'm like yo this is it. do I gotta pay for this like mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's, it's I got schooled and I accepted it you know what I mean like that's what I like I like accepting getting schooled like it's just my thing like yeah. like if bro if I'm the if I'm the smartest dude in the room I gotta get out <laughs> I'm out like yeah. you know what I mean I, I, I like talking to people and, and I like being like oh this is who's the new guy you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I love being the new guy. Man. Yeah, I, like, no idea what, what he, what, everything that he knew. Like, except from advancing, I didn't know what a hard ticket was. I didn't, they, none of that shit. Yeah. I mean, well, nightclubs. I think what you guys built together is, like, exciting. It's, like, one of the, it's my favorite thing. It's, like, my favorite thing in Vegas right now. And, uh, you know, I, th- you. I think it's rare. It's rare for me to say something like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You. But I, I think you, you know, kudos to you guys. Like mad props, mad love. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah congrats, and, and piggybacking yeah. off me, like I'm his OG. Y'all were my both these OGs, man. Like to be in this room now, I'm like, 
fuck, bro. I would never even think I would sit down with Crooked and talk to him. I remember we'd go to the club. You know, you're busy. My hey, dope ass mix. I was dope. Like, yeah, what's up? What's up? Like, but you guys were my not like that. Like you were shutting me off. You were just like, you're busy. And y'all, y'all were my OGs. I would see you guys at life, fucking Dre's. I'm like, damn, bro. Like that's to like invite me out. Now I'm like, damn, the OG D Miles too. Y'all. Y'all, y'all, my, y'all my OG so nah, to have nah. me in here that's like fucking I mean, that's yo, like, tight I, I've seen like you know it's, it's hard man it's like you know like I talk to a lot of young DJs yeah. and it's like they don't realize what a long road it is you know what <laughs> I'm saying like that's what I'm saying it's like there's so many ups and downs and it's just really about learning from your mistakes and learning from everything and just like making as many mistakes as possible and being as uncomfortable as possible but it, it's also about just being consistent and not giving up and not giving up yeah. and it's like even when you're knocked down he's just like i always tell him you just got to make sure you keep your cards on the table like even if you're like you're not winning any jackpots you're not winning any big hands and you're watching everyone that. win like you're putting your cards in you're putting the ante up you're watching them get a jackpot you're getting on another dude get a big hand and yeah. you're just like when is my hand gonna come in yeah and then you you win one a little one you're like oh man that's dope i'm gonna keep going mm. and then before you know it you know what i'm saying you're gonna get that big hand but it's just like it is you just need to make sure you leave your cards on the table and you stay consistent 100 you know what i'm saying so i exile i know you be, i i love your journey and i love the ups and downs and i love the the person you become thanks man you know what i'm saying like i love who you are right now thanks, and i and, and i'm looking forward to working with y'all like I, i'm really looking forward to october 26 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, by the way i got to shout out marcel i have to shout him out i got to because he's the one who got this thing done all right yeah. from altura to our party to everything you know what i mean marcel yeah that's my boy you know what I mean? that's our partner it's our partner with okay altura. Marcel. marcel yeah. oh yeah we haven't he mentioned him at all he hates yeah. interviews so um, <laughs> hates interviews so we try to bring him on yeah, marcel yeah. is uh, a genius a, a guy who's yeah. the wolf of wall street bro like he gets all <laughs> negotiation shit done so without him we would not be here as it's well. not even that it's just you know what i mean like think about it i come from revelation that's that's somebody that's a company out here that's looked up to in uh almost to a caliber of like live nation or insomniac mm -hmm. or you know what i mean in that type of caliber of events like those are that that's you know what i mean that's someone who gave me their knowledge to even bring it over here you know what i mean to let me you know bring it to the latin game you know because the way the lat, lat like latin artists do their work bro is night and day from edm edm cats i just hit them up i'm like hey bro this your, this your this your hotel room here's your driver's info like da -da -da -da. the latinos know they want you to hold their hand the whole way through like, come taste the water. Like, is it cold? Like, I'm just like, bro, like, you want it after? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so like, it's like night, it's like, it's like Hollywood superstar and, hey, bro, you ready for your set? Yeah. You know what I mean? So just learning from that from their side is, is what allows us to bloom so high too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to so, Marcel, bro. Yeah. It's great, man. And Chris, though. Yeah. Chris, too, Chris. I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we got you guys here. Thank and you. I'm glad, I'm looking forward to the event, man. Let's get it. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Tour 26? Yeah. Yo. La quinceañera de Crooked. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sienna's cro Crooked Street. Yo, DJ, <laughs> DJ Exile, DJ AR, Altura. Altura Thank you, Papi. guys. <laughs> thank you, for Thank you, thank thank you, you guys, guys so much. Thank you. thank you. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.